Hi friends, welcome to a new video and this one is pretty exciting. Um, it's the first art haul of this year for me. Usually I buy supplies just one at a time whenever I run out of something. But I feel like I needed a little bit of a pick-me-up moment. Um, and even though I don't really practice retail therapy, I really enjoyed just getting some stuff that I wanted to try for a long time. Um, some of the things I actually found by accident, so I'm excited to give it a try and uh, open it up and test it out with you together. So let's jump right in. Alright, so first of all, I wanted to start was this huge, huge collection of the gesso boards. I've been in kind of a great momentum with my paintings lately. Um, actually, as I'm filming today, in two days I will be hanging up my first solo show. Um, all of the paintings are oils and watercolors, but while I was finishing up all of the paintings um, for this show, I was kind of enjoying the speed at which I was creating and all of the ideas and creative juices that were flowing. So I wanted to pick up some gesso boards to do a little bit of a smaller format paintings and also try gouache on them. And the nice surprise was that when I went to the Hobby Lobby, these were all at a reduced price. 74 cents for the six by six and um, the largest one I got is 11 by 14 it was only dollar 62 um, you can see it yourself I didn't believe this at first when I found them uh, but I was pretty excited so I got two six by six um, I don't really work in a lot of the square format but um, I don't know. I will see what I can do with these ones. Um, I just wanted to try something small and cute too. Um, I got three A by tens of the gesso boards, and I got two A by tens. These are called the artist panels, primed smooth, and I haven't opened these yet. But we can open them together on camera. So I've never tried this smooth surface and it says that it's great for mixed media, oils, acrylic, paint pouring, graphite and more. So I want to try um, gouache on these and if it goes well, um, then it was something that I would like to do in the future to make more finished gouache paintings. So far, all of the gouache landscapes that I've done have been in my sketchbooks and it's really hard to then um, frame those works and have them available for sale. I don't know why I'm struggling with this so much. Yeah, so these, as you can see, are very smooth, no texture at all, but also not glossy. Um, it does feel with just a tiny bit of tooth to it, so um, it's not perfectly smooth. But um, another thing that I also wanted to try was this is um, the molding paste to create a little bit of texture and gouache can sometimes um, look a little bit flat because of the color that it dries to but also because of its texture so something that I wanted to experiment with is creating that brush stroke texture that painterly texture on the board first and then paint over it um, and I decided to go with the light molding paste, not the um, heavy one, the thick one. Um, I just think this one will be a little bit easier to manipulate and also my hope is that this one wouldn't dry up to really heavy texture, that this would be softer. Um, just to see if I really like how it looks and um, I'll give this a try. And if you um, have never tried the 
ampersand gesso boards. Um, I'm not going to open all of the panels today. I want to preserve the nice, smooth, white surface. But the gesso board, the difference is from the smooth panels that gesso board has just a slight amount of tooth. Um, even less than, I would say, the cold press watercolor uh, paper. Um, this is just has a little bit of grain to it. So sometimes if I'm in a rush, I will just prime it with um, just, a, just a simple acrylic color or a light wash of oil color thinned down with a terpenoid. But um, if I have enough time and if I'm smart enough to plan in advance, then I would apply at least one more coat of gesso. Because for me, this surface still doesn't have enough grip. I like to, to have a little bit more of the tooth, then the, pa uh, the paint attaches better to it and sits better on the palette. It's not picking up with every next brush stroke as much. So um, these I will leave for later. I'm gonna leave them all wrapped in papers and I'm gonna wrap this one back as well. Also, it's easier to just see the size later on when I'm ready to paint something. And hopefully I will have time to film these paintings in the future if I do them in gouache. All right, let's move on. All right, so the next purchase was a pretty cute one. And I don't know if I filmed it before, but I've purchased the mini table easel before. Um, but my son has kind of confiscated it and he's used it for a lot of his projects. So I just finally gave it to him and decided to get myself another one because this one is really comfortable for the smaller paintings. And um, especially for all of the smaller uh, gesso panels that I got for future gouache paintings, I think this one is going to be a great choice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it together. And oh, by the way, these were on, uh, on sale at Hobby Lobby too. Um, I think they were on a 40% sale. So that's a good deal. And looks like there's actually no assembly required, right? So this just goes up. All right, let me switch the angle of the camera so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so here is how it looks. And I like that it has a smaller footprint so it doesn't take a lot of the space on the table and I can just leave it assembled like this somewhere in the corner. And I think it's going to be great for all the smaller panels that I've got here. And I think it looks pretty great and quite functional. The tallest painting you can fit up there, um, I believe is 12 inches, but if I was painting anything larger than that, then I would just use a larger easel. All right, so continuing to speak about all of the future gouache paintings, I, since I wanted to, to do more of a permanent long-lasting gouache paintings on boards, I wanted to find a way, um, well, the better way to preserve them because I've tried varnishing them before, but all of the varnishes that I've had were gloss varnishes and they just really um, kind of take away that nice quality of gouaches that I like about them when they dry to a flat matte finish and they just, you know, it's the the character of gouache paint. So I want to try to preserve that and I feel like matte varnishes, they are much harder to work with. For some reason, I could never quite figure out how to get a smooth cover out of them. Um, they come out a little bit uneven and um, so far I've been using the matte medium um, in my sketchbooks if I wanted to just preserve them from smudging and um, from getting any other artworks um, from other pages uh, transferring onto them. 
but um, I want to try new things. So I've got this golden satin um, archival varnish. Um, and another thing that I don't like about the gloss varnish is that it also adds darkness to everything from mid-tones and down to the shadows. So I wanted to make sure that the colors would still look somewhat the same. And as you can see, I already gave this a try in um, one of my sketchbooks. And you can see this painting um, in the video that I made. So uh, it does make it a little bit darker. You can see this is the varnish side, the darker one. And this one I left un unvarnished for the sake of the experiment. Um, it does make it a little bit darker but it's not glossy. It's, it's still, um, it does have a little bit of a velvet sheen to it, but it doesn't have that glossy, sparkly look, which is something that I was looking for. So, um, so far I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to keep trying on more of my um, sketchbook gouache paintings. Um, just to see also how it looks on different colors, how it lasts over time, um, how it behaves with thicker paint applications and thinner paint applications. Um, because, uh, you know, sometimes the thicker paint that builds a little bit of texture would react differently to varnishes. So I'm going to continue testing this out, but so far I'm pretty happy. All right, the next exciting thing um, is a set of oil pastels. I've heard a lot of good reviews about this set. It's very affordable. It's, it was only $10. Um, it has 50 sticks and I know this is not the best quality. Uh, I know these are not the ones um, to try if you want to try oil pastels for the first time to really get the feel of them you should get something a little bit better quality but i wanted to have a stack of supplies that i don't really care about much something that i don't care about so-called wasting or if I want to do artworks just for fun, just for myself and my sketchbook. I've been more active in my sketchbook lately, which is something that I also enjoy and want to keep the momentum going. So I wanted to have more things that would excite me to reach out for them and use them in my sketchbook to experiment with different looks and with different techniques. So let's open this up and see what's inside all right right away i can say that i really like the selection of colors i like that they're all on the lighter side um, I've seen some of the sets where there are a lot of really, really dark, moody colors. But I want this to be a playful set and I want it to have some of the lighter happy colors in here. So here you can see without the cover. And I'm going to swatch them out all in my art catalog sketchbook. So if you've seen in my um, sketchbook haul, um, I picked up the Stillman and Burn sketchbook to make it my art supplies catalog where all I do is just swatches of my art supplies. It just helps it to make it easier to see what I have, the colors that I have selections. Um, if I want to go to the store and pick up some more colors from a certain set, I can bring this with me to make sure I'm not buying duplicates. So uh, let's let's try it out.
All right, so here are all of the 50 colors swatched. Um, and actually there are 49 colors because there are two white sticks there. So there are only 49 colors. But I still enjoy the great variety of them. I like this one, the old rose and the pale brown. I also like the nice selection of greens and blues in there. We have some cooler ones, a warmer ones, and a nice selection of grays as well. We have a yellow gray, light gray, um, gray and some deeper, darker colors also in a cooler and a warmer one. I feel like this is um, something that a lot of the sets are usually skipping on, putting in just one gray and one black. But I feel like overall this is a quite a nice set and I'm excited to test it out in my sketchbook too in the future sketches. I'm just going to put in a sheet of vellum paper in between these two pages so they don't smudge. And we will move on. Oh, one more thing I forgot to say is that um, while I was swatching these, I noticed that some of the sticks were smoother than the other. Some felt a little bit scratchy, but overall they are uh, smooth and easier to control, feeling like very, very soft color pencils. So they also come to a nice edge on the side. Um, you can break them in half and have another edge, you can sharpen them to an edge and um, these make fine marks as well as thick marks too. So I'm excited to try these out and have some fun with them. Alright, let's move on. Okay, so another thing that I kind of found by accident is the General's 9B pencil. Um, this is supposed to be extra black graphite, so let's try it out and see what it actually looks like. Okay, I am not the best at opening things gracefully on camera. I just kind of dig in and go for it. <laughs> Um, so a nice thing is that it, it comes in sharpened. Um, I don't think I have anything this thick for sharpening pencils. It's a lot bigger than a regular pencil. For comparison, if I put um, a regular pencil next to it, you can see how much bigger it is. Um, but let's try it out. Um, this is my current everyday sketchbook and this one is an art creation by Talens. It's something that I've been using the most lately. So. Now, actually, I'm going to swatch it in the back. That's where I keep all of my swatches of the different art supplies to see how they look in the sketchbook. All right, so it does feel like a regular pencil. Something that I was afraid of is that it would be waxy, like a color pencil. But no, it does feel like a regular pencil and it has that graphite texture to it. And I like that you can still create um, a quite a variety of values with this one. So, 
very nice. I'm excited to use this one for some sketches. Um, and I feel like this is definitely darker um, than the darkest graphite pencils that I have. Um, so just to compare, um, the darker ones that I've been using for my sketches are the Conte crayon but this one is definitely not a graphite this is more like a crayon and it, it does give you that nice rich black look but this one is definitely much more waxy and the darkest pencil that I have so far the graphite pencil is 8B so if we put this one next to it you can see how much lighter it is and the thing that I like about this new General's pencil is that it doesn't have the sheen to it. You can see how much more glossy the graphite pencil is and how reflective it is. And the General's one, the darker one, is matte and doesn't have any reflections on it. So I think that's also what deepens the value of it. It just doesn't pick up as much light around. So, um, Really cool, I think it was only $3, so I'm excited to add this one um, into my pencil box and just have to figure out how to sharpen it. I don't think I have anything this thick to sharpen it because you can see by my poor Conte crayon, this one has been hand sharpened and I haven't done the best job. I also don't really like playing around with exacto knives uh, to sharpen my pencils. I like to be on the safer side with the pencil sharpeners, but that's a minor detail and we'll figure it out. Um, so far, very happy with it and looking forward to working with it more. All right, well, we have our sketchbook open. Another thing that I wanted to try is the acrylic ink. Um, I had one before from Amsterdam, I believe it was the white one. I don't have it around right now, but I wanted to experiment with this one for the line work when I do just like the simple um, line sketches and something like this, just to add a little bit of color um, when I'm doing something quick and easy without adding a lot of them details so I believe I tried it out here on oh, no, these are different inks um, so yeah these are acrylic inks by these are by Della Rowney, um, just to see how they look in the sketchbook and I pointed out that these take a long time to dry um, so for larger washes, I'm probably not going to use them, but this just gave me an idea to try them out for just using like the outlines. And I, since I opened this page, we can also test it out here. And let me just write down the details for this one. Oh, we have to shake it really well because acrylic ink uses pigment that likes to settle on the bottom so even if it looks um, like it's all mixed it's best to just mix it up a little bit more to make sure you get an accurate color oh I love these I love these blues. Okay, let's drop some so we can actually spread it out with a brush. So I'm just using a dry brush. I'm not picking up any extra water. Just to spread it out. And now I'm going to wet my brush just to give it um, a little bit more diluted look. Just to see how it looks on the paper. Um, so this is definitely not the paper to use for large washes. You can see all of these little dots, like little crumbles of paper picking up because this is a sketchbook paper. This is not a watercolor paper. 
but I do like the tone of this blue and I think it will be fun. It actually looks a little bit darker. Um, it's just picking up a lot of light from the ring light, but it looks a little bit darker in real life and I think it will be fun to use this one for the line work with the line brush. Um, I want to try also um, the dip pen with it. Maybe one of the cheaper ones, the one I'm not afraid of ruining just in case it clogs it. But usually I'm pretty good with cleaning my dip pens, so hopefully that won't be an issue. So overall, happy with this purchase too. I think it's gonna make um, a quite fun art supplies too. All right, and speaking of sketchbook, um, I've been enjoying playing around with collaging a little bit and stamping. And I don't know if you've seen it on some of the pages. Um, okay, trying not to mess up this, but I've been kind of using stamping quite a lot. And it's just a little detail that I like to add, like you can see like here and there. I do also stamps for the dates. But I wanted to just like be more playful in general and just add some more um, collaging and kind of extra layers to the pages. So I picked up this set. I don't even know what you call it pocket cards so I believe that this is just like ephemera for collaging and it has a variety of smaller medium and larger ones and it also looks like they are all double side sided yeah so the front side and the back side is nice matte finish and these are not too thick so this these will be easy to incorporate into the sketchbook and I just like all of these kind of naturalistic sketches and all of these kind of old school themes And also a lot of patterns repeat themselves. So I think that's gonna help it look more consistent throughout the sketchbook. All right, so it looks like the back side has more um, of a larger pattern on the car and then the front side has more of a collaged look was a lot of different pieces on one page. Ooh, I love this one. Oh, these are so cute. Oh, I love these. One more thing I wanted to find um, are the stickers as the stamps. So, it's just something for the future to keep it. Oh, this is cute too keep an eye out for. So idea was that I could maybe like rip them up and use them in the sketchbook but now I don't want to rip them up. I just want to keep them whole like these. These are also cute as bookmarks. So larger ones have similar backing with a larger pattern and then the front ones have more collage. Like, oh, okay, these have kind of like bigger designs, like complete, more complete designs. And I like the printing quality. Even on the fine print, um, you can still read the words. So it's not smudged. Oh, this is beautiful too. Uh, I think this is my favorite part of this whole article. Oh, this one is cute too. Okay, I think I need to get a second set of these 
just so I don't feel too precious about it and don't save <laughs> all of the cards for later um, just so I use them up more in the sketchbook and another cute little addition um, in a similar theme um, is a collage paper and this is a roll and this is six yards um, almost five and a half meters so let's see this one out too so you can kind of see the theme that I enjoy here um, it's a sort of the vintage um, naturalistic um, if you can call it more like an apothecary look okay I don't know how convenient this is going to be to store I don't know if this is gonna all unfold Ooh, this is cute. So, okay, so this is a much thinner paper. So, I think this will be cute for some backgrounds to later paint maybe over it. So, you can just attach it to the paper. It doesn't add too much texture. And then you can paint over it. Oh, goodness. Okay, so... All right, so the pattern, I would say, quite large. Let me zoom out a little bit. So you can see, like, from the beetle to beetle. So this is, like, a complete pattern. And then it repeats. Um, this is more like a velum quality. But I like that I now have the variety between a little bit of thicker cards. And these ones, actually, it doesn't really unroll on its own so my concern with storage is not a problem with this roll okay very cute I'm very excited about this all right so this is it for this first um, little messy art haul the first art haul of the year and I'm excited to have some new supplies to play with and to spark a little bit of my creativity in the beginning of the year. Um, a lot of these supplies um, I will be using in the future videos, but mostly for sketching. And you can see a lot of my shorter videos, tutorials, my sketchbook videos on my Patreon page. Um, you can subscribe, I'm gonna leave the link below to check out what I have there. Um, most of those videos are the tutorials with the detailed descriptions for all of the techniques for the supplies that I use, different themes and in February I'm going to be adding more video um, for how to use a lot of the different supplies in your sketchbooks and how to become more playful which is something that I'm trying to do more of in my sketching free time so check out patreon um, say hi to me there and I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you got inspired to try something and I will see you in the next video bye